This video was created to guide you through understanding how to properly set up your machine. There are many ways to mount the material that you wish to cut to the milling bed. The three that we recommend are C-clamps, double-sided carpet tape, and finally a low-profile heavy-duty drill press vise. If you have fully assembled your machine by following our assembly videos or reading the assembly manual, the last physical step you'll need to complete is to make sure that the mounted router on your mill one is level to the milling bed. To do this, we recommend getting a spare piece of scrap wood which is at least an eighth of an inch thick and approximately the same size as the bed, as well as the largest end mill that you have available to you. In this case, we'll be using a quarter inch two flute end mill. The idea is that once you've attached the scrap wood to the bed, you can run a program which will cut the scrap wood flat. This milled surface will now become the new surface you'll attach your material to since it will now be level in relation to your cutting tool. If you've already installed a bit in your router, be sure to remove it using the tools provided with your router. And if you are using an adapter and need to remove it, an easy way to do this is to angle the bit while it's inside the collar and pull the adapter out. Otherwise, you can simply remove the retaining collar nut off the end of the router. You may now insert and tighten the larger end mill into place. It is at this point that your mill one should be powered on and plugged into one of the USB ports on your computer. We'll explain what most sections of the G-code sender do section by section. First, ensure that you've set the baud rate to 115,200 and the firmware to Gerbil. Once done, you should be able to use the refresh button, then click the drop down arrow next to port to select the auto detected port. Click open. You'll notice some machine commands that scroll through the command window. This is the machine starting up. You should see that the machine status is currently idle. This will change to active once you run a job. You'll also notice columns for work position and machine position. Machine position is the machine's absolute coordinates and aren't too important. What's more important is the work position coordinates since these are relative. This means that the work position coordinates can be set and reset and this is useful for setting the origin of your workpiece, also known as the starting point of your cut. We'll talk more about this soon. Below that is the section for uploading and sending files. We'll also use this in just a bit. There's also the machine control tab, used for manually moving the machine, the console, which you can type machine commands into, and it indicates the current machine commands being run, And finally, there's still more options in the Settings tab, which we won't need to touch for now. Back to the Machine Control tab, we can see the option to enable keyboard movement. You should be able to either use the arrow keys or the buttons in the tab to move the head of your mill one once you set the feed rate to at least 800. If you're more comfortable with inches, you can also toggle the units of movement. Play around with each axis and get a feel for how they move. Now, since we designed the bed leveling G-code to have its origin at the front left corner of the machine, you should now prep the machine by moving the head there. The two most common origin points for a CNC machine are the top center of the piece or the front left. To get the head to the right position, move the X and Y axes to the limits of each axis and the Z axis so the end mill is nearly touching the surface of the wood. You can now browse to where you downloaded the platform leveling G-code file. Once open, you should be able to visualize the file to see where your machine will be making cuts and where the end mill currently is relative to the cuts it will be making. If you notice that the end mill isn't at the corner of the cutting surface, this indicates you haven't yet zeroed all of the axes. You can do this by clicking 
Reset 0 in the Machine Control tab. As previously mentioned, this will reset all of the work position coordinates and set the origin for cutting. You'll be able to see this change once you visualize the cut again. The last step will be to turn on your router. Hit send in the UGS and watch as your mill one comes to life. If you notice any grinding noises during the program, it shouldn't be an issue. This is just the machine moving to the limits of the axes in order to ensure that a level service the size of the build volume is produced. Depending on the bit size, this job should be complete in 20 to 40 minutes. Once completed, you will now have a reliable surface to mount to.